What is going on guys, it's Waffle here and welcome back to some more Subnautica Below Zero. Now last time we left off, we went diving deep below, not below zero though, it wasn't that cold. <laughs> we went diving deep below that away to the alien distress call origin, finally found where that was and it was kind of hidden, like we, we went into like a, an underwater like kelp field or something like that. Uh, first of all, and, and didn't have any luck over there. We might want to go back there a little bit later, though, because there was a bunch of other stuff over there, like some weird, like, pustules or something like that that we can get. <laughs> so I might want to look into getting, uh, going back there sometime if I need those, more of those pustules. I think we got a few of those, but I need more here in the future. Another thing, though, uh, I remember at the end of last episode, I did remember I, I wanted to make a repair tool, and I, just before I forget, just before I block it out of my mind and get distracted by other stuff, I got comments from you guys saying to come over here, and I could, yep. Crystalline Sulfur, here it is over here, yeah. I guess I, I emptied out all of the lockers and stuff like that over here when we uh, built our base over there, or at least our current base. Uh, I emptied out all these like floating lockers here, but I never came back inside of here to empty this out. So I guess we had a lot of stuff left behind that I just completely forgot about. And a Pangling! <laughs> guess I'll grab him too, I'll bring him back too. There you go. See, I had I had a lot of table coral, I had a bunch of stuff, I had some paintings and stuff on that creature eggs. Grab those, let me grab these uh, other materials, batteries and stuff. Flare, a couple flares, I think uh, you guys commented saying I could use those flares, oh I'm actually full right now, whoops. I think you guys commented saying I could use those flares to distract, I think Leviathan or Sea Monkey or something. You guys said I could use that to distract something. As well as, uh, speaking of moving underwater and stuff like that, you guys reminded me, hey, you need to make those heckin' fic- uh, not fippers, flippers! <laughs> Flipper 179! I need to make those heckin' flippers! I guess I never made them! I guess it was just it's something that you make like really early on in Subnautica. I just assume I already had it. Fins, that's what it's called, yeah. And we can actually make it like right now, right? Silicon Rubber 2? I think we have another one over here. Uh, yeah, we have three of them actually. Oh, whoops, I don't have any, uh... I need to drink water, so boom, there you go. Uh, oh man, Arctic Peeper. Do I have any, uh, salts? Here I do, so I could actually cure one of those peepers into a cured peeper, so there you go. Uh, now my inventory is full again, but I might, I, I need to eat something, so. <laughs> Just to kind of get my, uh, let's see, where that, there it is right there, okay, nice. All right, let's get some more water, there you go, oh, we're basically full, okay. Let's grab the, what was I doing, here you go, silicon rubber. Should be able to make the flippers now, right, or the fins now. Where is that, equipment? Here you go, all right. Yeah, and remember last episode, we actually found the rebreather like blueprint or something like that, and we made one last episode as well. You guys actually reminded me in the comments saying that, yeah, the rebreather, like, there is no limit. Like, 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 I, I, for some reason I thought, like, maybe there's an upgraded, uh, rebreather you have to make inside the upgrade station or whatever it's called, modification station? I forget what it was called, where is it? Here's somewhere. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, one, one thing I do want to, uh, myth must, this exterior grow bed, I want to see if I can actually place one where the penglings are, you know, above water, out of water, and see if I can actually grow shrub nuts on those, because I do want to see if I can actually get a bunch of those, because I know shrub nuts are probably going to be a great source of food, and I know some sort of, like, a uh, out-of-the-water, like, like tree or something like that was, like, our main source of food back in regular Subnautica, so I definitely want to see if I can get that going here. But there you go, we have another uh, pangling inside there, and I can't put any creature eggs inside here, unfortunately. I might need that alien containment unit, but... For right now, I guess we'll just put up the other eggs over here. Creature eggs, boom. There are even more creature eggs that we left behind that we haven't done anything with, so we need to worry about, uh, we need to look into that, but for right now, I'm just going to turn all these bladder fish into bottled water, filtered water, and then what we're going to do is see if we can actually make that uh, repair tool, because I think the main thing we were missing was that crystalline sulfur, and now that you guys reminded me to go back there and actually get it from our original base, we might be able to actually make it now. Where was that? I uh, probably should have had it pinned earlier. Oh, here's the uh, upgrade station stuff over here. Yeah, modification uh, station, that's what it's called. Yeah, we don't have that just yet. I think you need diamond for that, and that's not going to be quite as hard as I thought it was, because uh, I was thinking about ruby when I was thinking about that thing. Either way, uh, I'm not seeing where I might have passed over it just a second. There it is right there, repair tool. Uh, just one titanium and one silicon rubber. Okay, I don't even need to pin that. Boom. One titanium and one silicon rubber. Let's grab a titanium from over here. Boom. Surprised we have no titanium on us right now, but uh, let's see. What else I do on uh, tools? That's it. Repair tool. Okay, so there you go. I don't know what materials we're going to need with this repair tool to repair our thing over here. Remember, this thing actually took a decent amount of damage. I don't know how much uh, health it has right now. Like, it's over 50, I think. Oh, wait, no, it's actually 45. Whoa. But yeah, it, it, it's relatively low. We definitely want to repair it, especially if we're going to go out and adventure a little bit. You can see there's like like water leaking out of the inside there, or whatever there, and it sparks like sparking right there. So if we get the repair tool, put that on number, uh, I guess we'll put that on number four, just because I'm not going to be using anything else right there. Do we need any materials or does it just use energy to repair this thing? Let's see, uh, no, okay. I guess just time and energy, that's how you repair it. Yeah, okay, awesome. 
slowly getting the hang of everything all over again. It's been a little while. You can't blame me, right? But, uh, yeah, you know, if we're in a precarious position, we don't really have the opportunity to just get out of our heckin' sea truck, come out here, spend 15, 20 seconds repairing it like that. Like, it's going to take quite a heckin' while if we try and do that. So it might be better, be better just to kind of escape out of there in the first place while it still has a little bit of health and then repair it a little bit later. Kind of like we just did right here. You know, repair it where it's nice and safe. And, of course, our power on this thing was 100%. Now it's down to 89, so you guys can kind of see the, the trade-off there in terms of uh, repairing there. I thought it required, like, actual material. Like, if I needed, a, like, titanium or other stuff to actually repair that, but apparently not. So that's actually good. Put all that stuff up. Uh, we have an extra battery right now, so uh, basically, there you go. Completely empty, so let's go put that up over there. And I believe we have, yeah, wiring kit randomly right there. Let's put that up as well. I guess I could cook those, uh, those other peepers. Because I don't think I have any other salt, so I guess I'll cook the arctic peeper like that. Either that, or I could just put them up inside of the, uh, inside of their aquarium behind me, and of course cook them a little bit later. <laughs> kind of like they do in restaurants where they have, heckin' lobsters on display, and you can kind of pick your own lobster that you're about to, heckin' consume, right? Let's put up an arctic peeper inside of there. There, okay. So, uh, eh, we can eat. Uh, oh, oh, eat it, eat it. There we go, okay. Uh, then I'll put up other stuff inside the plant section, which is here, which is going to be ribbon plant and table coral. I got a comment from someone saying that I'm gonna end this whole heckin' series basically with the snowball in my inventory so I, I guess we can keep that in there just to be a symbolic little meme <laughs> just have the snowball there randomly because i completely forgot about it I haven't used it at all and might as well just heck and keep it there now right <laughs> now i'm kind of thinking about making another uh another vault or uh what, what do you call this a locker I'm kind of thinking about making another locker which i oh yeah i need to get the habitat thing out let's put that at number four I can actually i don't know if i could actually just straight up use that without having it on the hot bar but uh there you go. oh yeah now we can make windows Hold on, do we have quartz? Like, extra quartz? I know. Oh, yeah, we, we can... There you go. We can get uh, glass. We can start getting some windows over here. So, let's get that. Let's install windows. Literally. <laughs> let's install uh, less than ten windows. Because we can't uh, place any more than, like, maybe three or four over here. So, we're not going to have literally windows ten over here. <laughs> but, uh, like, right here. I, I, I could definitely fit in a window right here. But, of course, that means lower uh, hole rating. Yeah, you can see our hole stri Oh, I can place one. Perfect. Oh, wait. Whoa, 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 what happened? Hold on, uh, I think, did that, did that first, I think that first window actually required two glass in it, I thought it was just one. Window deconstruct, what I need? Oh, I, oh, I guess the, uh, the aquarium was in the way, I wasn't able to finish it right there, but yeah, you can see my hole went down by another one right there, so, what I want to do is get a, uh, a reinforcement thing, place it there, and of course that should make up for, oh wow, look at, look at how open it just feels. Like, of course, nothing really physically changed inside of here, but it just feels more open now that we have the windows in here. It doesn't feel as claustrophobic and stuff like that, you know? Now, if I wanted to make the, uh... Here it is right here, reinforcement. I need lithium and three titanium. Man! Wait, I think I... Yeah, I, I've got some. Okay, so I can make two. I don't know how many titanium I, I have and how many I need, and... I think it was three titanium. Oh, yeah, I've got... I'll grab a couple more, just in, <laughs> just in case. There you go, reinforcement. So we'll place that here. There you go. So we went down two hull rating from those two glass. And we went up seven from one uh, reinforcement thing right there. Amazing. I can't place it from the inside. I might be able to place it from the outside here, though. Let's see. Can I place it here? Uh, whoops. Uh, reinforce. Oh, man, yeah. I, I think, I think, I don't think the lockers are blocking it. I think the, uh, the fabricator being on the wall, I think that's blocking it. So I might, might be able to deconstruct that. Let's do that. Let's deconstruct it. Getting literally all the resources back, which is good. Ooh, I hope I can place that back. Oh, no, it is the lock. Oh, yeah, see, they turned yellow there. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's only doing that because I'm placing it from the inside, just like the aquarium a minute ago, so. Ah, yeah, see, it's yelling. Ah, man. Well, I guess we can't have anything right there, so that sucks. But can I place a fabricator back there? I hope we can. Man, that'd be that'd be pretty terrible if I can't. I'm like, if that's the case, I might as well just place some more lockers there or something like that. Here we go, fabricator. Oh. Oh. There we go. Woo. Okay. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, do I want to place it a little bit higher up and then place something else below it? Coffee vending machine? I don't know, I think I might need a table, I'm not 100% sure. And then wall locker, what does that look like? Yeah, see, I don't think I can place a wall locker there and then if the, yeah, I might as well just fin- Oh, whoops. I might as well just finish the fabricator, so there you go. Yeah, the wall locker, yeah. It's an, it's a, it's a lower grade version of the, uh, these lockers here, they have less space and stuff like that, so it just makes sense to go. Yeah, you just need one quartz on top of the two titanium, so might as well just get the straight up locker there, you know? I uh, might as well place more lockers, like, right here. And I know, I got comments of you guys saying, yeah, I could just place it, like, right up against a wall like this, and stuff like that. But if I place them sideways like this, it makes it a little bit more accessible, and we're actually able to, uh, well, I can't... Ah, uh, I can't do it, because I have the battery thing right there. 
But uh, if I place it like this, I can place them uh, like heckin' bookshelves or uh, what do you call it? Like, like, like you know, I, I did this thing back in Minecraft. You know, it's space saving in a way. If you want to think about it like that. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh, there we go. Oh, no, nah, I don't have any quartz, man. All right, well, at least I kind of place that right there. But yeah, you know, uh, that's just kind of a holdover. I don't even have any quartz over here either, man. Nah, whatever. I guess I'll just place random food and stuff like that inside of one of these. You know, we have a lot of data logs that we need to listen to slash read. So I definitely want to get to that here in just a bit. But I guess for right now, I could place like first aid and nutrient blocks. I want to keep at least one in my inventory. You know, in an emergency situation sort of thing. Might as well just keep that there. Keep at least one flare on me. And of course, my lucky snowball. <laughs> Got to keep that on me, right? And uh, old. I, I don't I don't remember if there's any like a fridge or anything like that. We could put cooked stuff inside of like that. I don't I don't remember. Maybe. Let's actually listen to some data logs and whatever else, because we got a lot of them last episode with all the exploring we did, you know? So we need to listen to a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, and then the, I want to check about the exterior grow bed if I could do that out of water. Oh yep, yeah. it could be installed anywhere on land or underwater where there is space. Okay, perfect. So definitely want to go do a, uh, oh, I don't know where the nearest, the, uh, let's see, is there one like right out of our base? Like it's a rather temperate area that we're in right now, yeah. Uh, if I want to grow out of water. I kind of have to go all the way over here. Man. I'm like, if I come over here, like, once, I might not need to go back there for quite a while, so. Uh, let's see. How, how, how do you get the grow bed? Oh, man, I keep on putting off listening to the data logs and whatever else there, you know? Oh, yeah, one one thing I, I forgot to mention at the end, at the beginning of this episode. Last episode, we also made the... Where is it? It's here. It is right here. High capacity O2 tank. There. Oh! Hey! Copper ore! You guys! That's another thing. You can, man. Thanks for reminding me. There's sea monkey. One of the biggest things that heckin' heckin' happened last episode. You guys remember we went to the? <laughs> you guys didn't watch the whole video for some reason. Alien distress call origin. We went over there, got a heckin' alien implanted in our brain named Alan. I know, kind of a weird name for an alien. But because we have Alan in our heads, now these uh, sea monkeys are supposed to give us ores just like that. So I guess beforehand they were going to steal from me, but. Now that they know I have Alan connected to me, they're going to hopefully help me out trying to get this uh, device or whatever to kind of load Alan back. Oh, whoa. Captain. And I just got it. You know what? Let's listen to that right now. The sea monkeys have changed their tune. If only I could let them know what I need. Maybe they could bring me something useful next time. Hey, the copper ore. That's pretty useful. I can't complain about that there. Even though I literally just did my own data lock, but <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, the habitat bill. I, w I want to see if I can make one. Uh, a grow bed outside. There's so much heckin' stuff going on right now. <laughs> Jeez, what was I saying before that good sea monkey came over here? I was saying something. I forget what it was. <laughs> oh, I get so I can distract you guys. It's crazy. Now, where is the grow bed on this one? Uh, exterior grow bed. There it is right here. Okay, just two. Jeez, just two titanium. That's nothing. And I do want to go back to that one island. Let's get a couple. Uh, eh, let's get three. Why not? I have an exterior grow bed out here that I'm not even using, right? Yeah, that one right there. I still need to harvest from those, but let's go over here. Let's go build like three heckin' exterior grow beds, like at our nearest like ice, ice, not icicle, glacier. I don't even know. It, it doesn't really go down very much. It's just kind of a big old ice cube or something like here, you know? <laughs> I just feel like a glacier would go down a lot. Or maybe, yeah, I'm thinking about an iceberg, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, I'm like, we're kind of freezing right now. You wouldn't think something would be growing here, but I guess they kind of are. So uh, let's see us rotate it like this. Let's uh, easily kind of line them up next to each other like this. We do have a little bit of hypothermia we need to watch out for. Oh my gosh. Keep rotating each. Of this. There you go. We're at 58 uh, degrees or whatever there. Oh yeah, another thing you guys commented. You guys are super duper helpful in the comments last episode. Well, you guys are generally, but last episode you guys left a lot of helpful comments. But yeah, I was, I was getting confused about the high capacity O2 tank. Being like, oh, now it's it gives you 90 seconds of oxygen. It gives you 90 seconds of oxygen on top of the 45 seconds of oxygen you get normally. See right there, 45 seconds. This gives you 90 seconds on top of the 45 seconds. That's why it gives you 135 there on the bottom left. So thank you guys very much for clearing that up for me. Completely confused about that last episode until you guys reminded me about that, so that's good. So thank you very much for that. Now, now that we got those things out of the way, now we can actually listen to more hacking data logs. Now I'm not going to be super confused and distracted and all that kind of stuff. So let's listen to some more data logs. Uh, no more personal logs. We listened to all those. Logs and communications. Altera, what does this say? Disciplinary meeting and personal favors. Uh, I guess I'll listen to this one. Okay, so Emmanuel and Fred. Fred, the guy with the mustache, and Emmanuel, the like leader of the of the team or whatever the, from Altera that came to the below zero area, whatever this place was called. I forgot what the code word he used to describe this area was called. 
I don't know. Either way, let's listen. Fred, great to see you. Come on in. You don't mind if I record this, do you? Uh, am I in trouble? <laughs> no. You know me. Just a fanatic for details. And my memory's not what it used to be. <laughs> I know what that's like. <laughs> yes. Is that why you've been running so many personal errands for your colleagues? We asked you to limit them. Uh, so I am in trouble. That's not how I want you to look at it. Here's what I see. You're a team player. You want to get the job done. I think I have a pretty good record there. You want people to like you. Has anyone complained? Fred, the trouble is, not everyone is as reliable as you are. Sometimes people need help being where they need to be and concentrating on their work. All the trips were work-related. It appears you transported tech for Lil, rather far out from her base. Well, it needed to go deep, and she needed a sea truck. Her work is currently on surface installations. She shouldn't be anywhere near the water. I, uh, well, I... No more favors to friends, agreed? Yes, sir. <laughs> ah, I keep telling you. Call me Manu. <laughs> Manu? <laughs> Just chooses, like, random letters from the middle of his name right there for his nickname. Okay, well, that, that's kind of interesting there, I guess. Fred's kind of a selfless guy, doing favors for everyone, and sounds like Emmanuel doesn't like that sound. He, he probably heard about the Leviathan, like, chasing Fred or whatever he wants the heckin' Leviathan to stay from the second area. So maybe that's the, the reasoning behind this, perhaps? I don't know. Altera personnel? Oh, this is just kind of a little bio for these guys. Okay, Emmanuel Desjarn... Desjardins? Someone commented... I think, like, a few people commented, like, episode two or whatever, whenever uh, I got this guy's name. God, tell me how to pronounce it. I forgot. So excuse me for that. <laughs> probably going to be butchering everyone's second name over here. Emmanuel That... Human Resources and Communications Liaison reports to Halteric HQ, and there's his personality code. Fred Lachance. Oh man, Fred's kind of, he's, he's low-key a little bit thick right there, not bad. <laughs> and of course he's got that good old mustache right there. Fred Lachance, IT, Courier, and Maintenance Generalist, reports to Emmanuel Desjardins, current project, Various. Yeah, it sounds like it just by what we heard right there, and there's his personality right there. What's his personality compared to E5A? This is E5A 505. E5A401, okay, so, yeah, a little bit similar at the very beginning, and then they kind of veer off path right there. I don't know if that's actually how you decode that, but whatever. Jeremiah Murgle, look at that weird smile right there. He looks like a heckin' creep right there. <laughs> Anyways, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Murgle, technician, reports to Emmanuel Desjardins, current project, communications tower maintenance. Yeah, I think we heard a uh, data log from him somewhat recently. Altera misplaces one kilometer capital ship Aurora. Uh, oh gosh, I have to read this. Uh, I suppose we could read this, just maybe get up to date with Aurora and stuff like that, I suppose. Oh, there's like a little article right here from the Independent Galactic News Intergalactic Perspective. Okay, Altera misplaces one kilometer capital ship Aurora. Contact has been lost with the Aurora for 18 months into its journey to install a phase gate in the Ariadne arm. Report inside sources. Altera launched the Aurora to much fanfare almost two years ago and recently announced the ship had arrived in the destination solar system. The Aurora has reportedly now missed more than one routine check-in. Ooh, I wonder why, because it heckin' crashed. It got hit by a heckin' huge gun in the atmosphere and crashed into the water and exploded. <laughs> Maybe that's why it missed a heckin' routine check-in, right? And they're trying to cover that up. Asked for comment, a spokesperson for Altera said, Communication with the ships outside of the phase gate network could take weeks or months in ordinary circumstances and is commonly interrupted. The Aurora was in good shape and ahead of schedule than last time I checked in. We have no reason to think anything has changed. Nonetheless, our sources emphasize that Altera cannot yet explain the loss of contact, and given the exceptional value of the ship and its mission, they are taking every possible measure to re-establish contact. Shareholders will be watching closely. Keen readers will remember, however, that Altera's network of directors have a history of leaking scare stories like this to the press, only for the Transgov to rebound with positive news against the odds. Directors' shareholdings and dealings are, of course, not public information. Yeah, well, uh, the scare tactic here isn't going to have a happy ending because a heckin' Aurora got shot down and heckin' crashed into the water, so. <laughs> and exploded, of course, too. That was like, that was a very iconic moment back in Subnautica, that thing heckin' exploding. Like, uh, eh, pretty early on, actually, if I remember correctly, right? Alien robot. Yeah, this is the alien robot, yeah, that we saw over at the, uh, the alien distress signal area, which is kind of weird. 
Uh, this device is of alien origin, although its design is relatively simple. Purpose, its low threat level is at odds with the advanced technology apparently available to its designers, suggesting that it's intended more to patrol alien facilities and repair damaged infrastructure than to deter invaders. Yeah, it seemed very non-threatening to me, so obviously I didn't have to worry about it killing me there. <laughs> Uh, design. Despite its simple design, its construction is quite elegant in its minimalism. Four electromagnetic legs allow it to traverse floors, walls, ceilings, or floors, walls, and ceilings with reasonable speed and appear to be replaceable. Internally, there are few moving parts, rendering this construct energy efficient and resistant to wear over time. A rechargeable ion based power reserve ensures it continues to operate. Yeah, well, I took all the extra ion tubes and stuff like that out of the uh, facility, so that thing's probably going around on a battery and, uh, it's just going to stop working because <laughs> we can't I can replace this battery when there are no more ion cubes left, right? <laughs> Architect containment cube. This is the thing that we stole from that one area that I forgot about. And then I came back like two episodes later to gap. So, uh, man, I, there's a lot of actual reading I have to do here, though. But at least it's going to catch us up because we I don't want to get too far behind with all this reading here, like five episodes from now. So might as well get out of the way right now, or at least a good amount of it, right? Architect containment cube. While advanced human civilization has attempted for centuries to develop successful whole brain emulation techniques, it appears the architect race has built a platform for accompanying this holy grail of life extension technology. Okay, so we have some sort of ancient aliens consciousness inside of this heckin' cube right here? Uh, sounds like it. <laughs> Physically, the containment cubes appear to be compromised in a redundant array of quantum holographic storage layers supporting a hyper-dense capacity of 35 bits per electron. I don't know what how that compares to like stuff that we're used to, but uh, sounds like a lot. Okay, <laughs> the energy field that feeds a suspended animated cube also serves to power the operating software, allowing the intelligence and storage to maintain consciousness throughout the storage period. Once the stored consciousness has been transferred out of the cube, the component parts will become inert. Without witnessing and carefully observing the backup process, it is difficult to ascertain how the transfer works and whether or not the process is truly lossless. Ooh, yeah. Who knows what, what, what you like if you're transferring your consciousness from your body to this thing, like who knows what memories and other things that you lose on the way there. And then, of course, what memories and other things you lose on the way from this thing to whatever body you're moving from after this. It's such a weird thing to try and describe. Whatever. Who knows? <laughs> it's like a cube thing, though. Architect storage media. Uh, do I want to read this? It sounds like I'm their storage medium. Because <laughs> that guy went inside my head, Alan. I guess I could read this real quick, just because there are only a couple more things that we need to read about anyway, so we might as well finish this up. Architect storage media. While we have evolved beyond physical attachment, it is traditional to navigate space-time in conjunction with mobile, biomechanical storage media, altered and evolved over time to serve the inhabitants' needs. While it is possible to transfer between media at will, there is some comfort and prestige in improving a body over time. Yeah, this is such a weird way to describe a, a, a body. <laughs> Jeez. We have settled on a popular format for these media, though there are exceptions. It is a heavily modified version of our- Intake. Oh man, I, I need to drink some water here in a sec. It is a heavily modified version of our pre-civilized bodies. It provides good mobility, easy adaptation, and is easy to fix. In case of disaster, we could back up our data patterns to a sanctuary site for later retrieval. Yeah, I think they had- Oh, I think they're- I think it was destroyed now that I think about it. Back in Subnautica, there was like a backup, like, facility or something like that. It, it was underwater, there was like a- Ah, am I thinking about the right one? I'm thinking about something. Well, obviously it's going to be underwater. They're all underwater, right? <laughs> Except for that one that had the uh, the big old gun on it. I think that was the only facility that was out of water, right? But uh, once again, two or three years, my memory could be super faded with some stuff that I'm remembering. But or either that, or maybe I'm remembering this from some Nautica Below Zero early access. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, that is possible. I'm like, I've probably read a lot of similar stuff uh, right now and from the early access, so it wouldn't be too surprising. Uh, either way. I don't know where I was on this. Uh, it is recommended individuals be restored to a compatible medium as soon as possible. That's probably why Alan went into my body whenever he had the chance. Such hollow vessels may be fast grown from seed using specialized blueprints and materials. Uh, well, I, I kind of grew from a seed or, a, or an egg, I guess you could describe it as. <laughs> Being a human and whatnot. While it is technically possible for an individual to copy their data in order to duplicate themselves at infinitum, such behavior is considered beyond rude, and any self-respecting architect would resolve such a circumstance by immediately deleting themselves. Okay, so it's frowned upon to heck and clone yourself. That's considered selfish, so don't want to do that. Even though it would be pretty cool to have a conversation with yourself, kind of like I do literally every day as I record these videos. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Either way, and that'd be really nice. Like I, I could have one clone of me constantly recording, and the other clone constantly edits the videos. That'd be such a cool thing. <sighs> but alas, I have to do everything myself. Either way, uh, we have one more obelisk. Uh, oh, this is like nothing. Okay, we can read this in like ten seconds. Obelisk. Which one was this? Oh, this is the one that we saw underwater last episode in the in the kelp fields or whatever that place was called, huh? Yeah. This artifact's function is poorly understood. Seek fluid intake immediately. Okay, geez, I'm about to die. <laughs> this artifact's function is poorly understood, but scans indicate it is generating a strong electromagnetic field. Some hypothesized functions are energy transfer device, geomagnetic scientific instrument, and communication network node. Yeah, all those are pretty likely. Wasn't there some sort of like, uh, like transfer network or uh, energy network or something like that back in uh, Subnautica? So I wouldn't be too surprised if it was that. Then geologic data are okay. This just shows us a mineral uh, contains silver and titanium, contains gold and titanium, lead and titanium, limestone outcrop. Why does this have like more stuff? That's kind of interesting there. And of course, titanium and copper. And then ore vein, resources behind loose rock. There's like a thunderstorm going on outside right now, by the way. I don't know if that's picking up on the microphone right now. We have a jukebox and light stick. Listen to soothing tunes. You know what? We should probably make this thing. Listen to soothing tunes by Altera's best musical artists while you work. You probably get a copyright strike while we're at it, too. A mobile battery operated, uh, battery powered LED light that provides low level lighting in a 360 degree area and can be attached to most surfaces. That's a pretty uh, useful thing there. Oh, whoa, whoa. Something just happened outside. I don't know what. And then there's the modification station, which uh, we can't make just yet, so maybe we could read that a little bit later. Is there anything else that we could read, though, or listen to? Or Oh, we actually got decently caught up right there, honestly. Oh, well, then again, there's indigenous life. I need to read. Well, what was the thing, Fauna? There's a thing last episode we came across. I, I guess it was a carnivore. I don't know. Brian Wing. Was that it? Is this the thing that froze us last episode? I think it might have been. Uh, it's hard to tell. I guess we read about it real quick just to kind of get up to date with it. If we come across it again, at least we'll know something about it, right? But uh, this is going to be the last thing I read because I know like half the video so far has just been me reading slash listening to stuff. And I kind of want to go out and do a little bit of adventuring as well. But either way, Brian Wing, a medium sized predator known for. Oh, here it is right here. Known to spit super cooled salt water to freeze its prey from afar. So there it is right there. I literally had to read the first line to know which one it was. And yes, this was the creature we came across last episode. <laughs> a large bladder on the Brian Wing's underside fills with seawater as it swims. Some water is filtered out through an internal membrane, leaving behind a strong saline solution. Two flat, transparent, extendable fins act as radiators, releasing heat and cooling the bladder's contents. So that's how it cools down, I suppose. The brine wing can then contract its bladder, expelling the supercooled brine and freezing the seawater up to several meters away from it. Interesting. Sea fluid intake. Oh god, I'm starting to die. Oh. Oh, drink the water. Oh, oh, there you go. Stabilizing. Golly, I'm dying over here. <laughs> Literally reading so much I start dying. <laughs> Uh, either way, where was I? I think I was on the last line here. While warm-blooded... Oh, man, there's one more after that, so second to last, whatever. While warm-blooded life forms may suffer minor injuries on contact with a brine, it is not cold enough to freeze most vertebrates. The real danger is being helplessly encased in a block of ice, sinking ever closer towards the brine wing's jaws. Yeah, that's the only thing we've had a problem with. Just had to break out of the ice and then boom, we're good. Assessment, beware of... <laughs> beware of full bladder. <laughs> I'm like, I think I have a full bladder right now after drinking all that water, right? Golly. Let's drink another uh, decomposing, uh, eh, pfft, I'll eat it. Sure, why not? There you go. <laughs> that guy was kind of wasteful. It made our water go back down. I the location of some important technology. I implore you to investigate. Will this help us build you a body? I do not know what we will find. I just know it is important. Where is it? Where are we? Oh! Signal location uploaded to PDA. Architect Artifact X3J, 480 meters out of way. Okay, oh, that was a pretty good little rhyme right there. I guess we'll get inside of this. Uh, there you go, get inside of the sea truck. I'm like, I was heading this general direction in the first place because I wanted to get. Oh, well, no, I wasn't. I was going this way. See, I want to go back to the Delta Station, uh, whatever it was called, or Delta Station Dock. Just because I wanted to go over there and get some heckin' shrub nuts and start uh, planting those over there where we just made a bunch of external grow beds and whatnot, but because this is only 300... Oh, well, is it like... God! <laughs> is If it's like like cave accessible, like I have to go inside of a cave to get to this ancient artifact X3J, then we might have to save this for next episode, but it doesn't... Huh? I'm like, I'm still so far away from it. It's, it's very hard to tell. I don't think we're... Oh, oh, oh! Wait, whoa, wait, what, what is this? Hold on. Where am I? 
There's that. Pilot's last known. Yeah, we need to go over there, by the way. Like, we actually have to, because we have the sea truck now, it just makes sense to go over there finally, but... Oh, there's a whole fish right there. Cool. There's some salt right there I can get. Good. Quartz. Oh, man, there's a lot. You know what? I, I'm going to get out of here. We have a lot of salt, quartz, and whatever else. And we have the fins. We have the flippers on right now, so we should... Be oh, man, yeah, look at how heckin' fast we're moving. Golly. Oh, 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 oh. There's a thing right there we can scan, too. You know what? I need to scan all the heckin' stuff over here and see what we get. Is this... The world? There's like a thing tell me to go that way. It's very strange. Ugh. The world is this? Yeah, what is this? Can I not? No, I can't scan it. Oh, there's a brine wing right there. We need to watch out. Pangling right there. More quartz. I'll grab that. We need that if we want to have more windows and whatever else, but I'm still very confused about this. Oh, what is this? Pathfinder tool. Ooh. I guess uh, that's just what the Pathfinder tool is for. It makes a little. Oh, what in the world is gone? Yeah, I guess that was definitely part of the Pathfinder tool right there. What is this? Can I use it? What is this? Uh, can't use any. Oh, wait, hold on. One flare right there randomly. What's this? And nutrient block. And can't do anything there. It looks like a big tank or something like that, but I guess. Oh, oh, oh data box. What is this? It's a blueprint for something. Wait, what did we just get right there? Oh, it's probably a, uh, a recording or something that we could read or something like that, I guess. Huh? But there's nothing I could actually scan here. I think there would be, but there's not. There's the ancient artifact down there. Or art architect artifact down there. Uh, mobile vehicle, but eh, we don't need that. Yeah, I, d I definitely do need to. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I definitely do want to keep my eyes peeled for uh, more art or uh, more, more, more like. Oh, and uh, I got comments from you guys saying that the, the exploding. Fi oh, wait, no, this is. Cre yeah, it was a creature egg. Oh, I thought that was one of those uh, crash fish things. That's what it was called, by the way. Not boom fish, but crash fish. I guess they don't have it here. I guess it's just not native to this sort of temperate climate. Of oxygen remaining. Literally the exact opposite of temperate, but you guys know what I mean. I guess it, it, it wants more temperate climate and stuff like that, which makes sense because it's an exploding fellow and whatnot. But uh, there you go. Grabbed a bunch of salt and whatever else. Now we can get inside of. Uh, actually, you know what? Yep. Yeah, steal Warning. some of your oxygen. Of All right. Now we got a bunch of water. Oh, whoa. Now we got a bunch of uh, stuff discovered right there. I thought I saw some up there, but I guess not. Now we can go down here and hopefully discover some other stuff, right? Oh, man, it might be a cave accessible type thing. Just looking at it right now. Oh, what is that? There's another thing right there I can scan. Hold on. What is that? Grab tra- I don't- Do I have this? Oh, there you go. I, di I guess I didn't because we just got the blueprint synthesized. Awesome. Usually there's like a sound effect that happens whenever we get a blueprint synthesized. And then it ends, and then you could hear the voice go, New blueprint synthesized, or something like that, right? But we're not hearing anything right now, which is kind of weird. What's this? Oh, it's a quartz. Uh, see, I'm, I'm keeping my eye out. There's a lot of quartz over here. This is this is a good air. I, I, if I could take notes or whatever. Uh, there's no, like, actual coordinates I could write down or anything like that, but th this is a pretty good area where we could take a mental note. Be like, okay, if we need quartz, come over here, Hada. Now, is there an area over here where we can... Enter this. Oh, 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 maybe. Ooh, I think. Uh, nah. Nah, nah, yeah. Nah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I don't know how to get into there. It's got to be another thing. Like, oh, wait, no, never mind. Here it is. Here we go. I think. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I. I don't, I don't even know if we need the sea truck right now. You know, uh, I'll just do this. We will go down there with our sea glide. Sure, we got a propulsion cannon. What? Man! I don't remember if we used that very much, because I know I'm... Uh, whenever we explore the... Oh, wait, no, this isn't even a cave. Okay. I know we're, whenever we were exploring the Aurora, like, one thing that I just completely forgot about was the propulsion cannon, and that would have helped us out a little bit, maneuvering around the Aurora and whatnot, back in regular Subnautica and whatnot, right? Oh, wait, no, never mind, here we go. Oh, wait, hold on. No, I don't think so. I think this is just... Oh, wait, no. Yeah, it, 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 it this does go... De oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, is there a thing going to crash into me? Oh! It is! Oh, yeah, the, the crash fish is still here. Oh, I think I know. Oh, okay. Oh, cool, okay. I, I think I misremembered right there. I think you guys said, uh... Not that they removed the crash fish, but that it doesn't give us the, uh... Oh, wait, no, it still does give us the crystalline sulfur. Pfft. I don't know anymore. I, I thought I read someone saying it doesn't give you crystalline sulfur, but we just got some right there, so I'm really confused. Oh, and he's going to give me an ore. What are you going to give me there, a little, uh, little, little sea monkey? What are you going to get? Oh, titanium? Eh, I'll take it. Not that big of a deal. Oh, yeah, here, we have another... See, now, I, I'm skeptical. 94 meters out of way. I'm skeptical this is just another 
We're in a kelp cave or whatever here. Like, we're not actually going to find anything here. But it seems like we might. Hold on. I still need to read about the oxygen plant. Oh, there, there are the spinner guys right there. Oh, what is this? Another creature egg? Something like a scan here. Oh, another thing to the laser cutter. Cool. I think we have one, uh, laser cutter thing scanned right now. We need to get- Yep. Now we have two out of three, which is good. A little bit of progress there. What are you going to get me? Hopefully not steal anything. Titanium. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Now we're- Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, what is this? Oh, here we go. What you found is more than just an artifact. It will help me follow the traces my people left on this planet. I'm glad it could help. I know you would still prefer me to have a corporeal form of my own. Well, yes. If you continue searching, I may regain some of my connection to the network, piece by piece. Alright, that'll be helpful. Yeah, I do not remember this from the uh, early access. I, I guess whenever I played, it was so brand new, they didn't even know what to do with the... Uh, oh, I guess it's going to give us the uh, last fragment of the laser cutter which is going to be throughout three and then yep there we go we get the blueprint cool i guess alan was such a new idea at the time they didn't know what to do with him yet and now they kind of gave him a thing where we go around scanning ancient alien artifacts and but eventually you come across uh like, like like the the way to make his body i guess you could describe it as <laughs> oh man there's more stuff around here yeah this gives us gold but it gave me titanium and there we go got gold right there perfect i think there's an actual yeah there is a flash like an actual flashlight that we can make so I definitely want to watch out for the- Oh, what will happen here? He's trying to give me something? Wow. Is it? Ah, thank you very much, sea monkey. Now, I need to watch out because I'm going to run out of egg and oxygen and die here if I'm not careful. So, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to fly out of here and swim out of here, whatever. Here we go, here we go, perfect. Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. It's the same room? What is this? Oh yeah, okay. Multiple entrances in the same area. Okay, so a little bit of redundancy there. Still took me a little while to actually find the the heckin' ancient alien artifact right there in, in the first place, but whatever. At least we got it discovered, which is good. Not too bad. Kind of, uh, kind of got worried there for a minute because I was like, oh, it's going to be another dead end, just like last episode where we came to these, like, kelp fields or whatever. Oh, now Alan's calling again. How do your people communicate if you are not networked? What do you mean? We just talk to each other. Do you not find that primitive? We exist as data. We are all aware of each other's thoughts and needs. Scientific endeavors are accomplished much more smoothly this way. There's more to life than research, Alan. I can't lie. Work would go faster if I could read my colleagues' minds, but thoughts are private, and people have their own inner lives. People change and need space to think. Space helps you think. I find that being separated from my network is very quiet. What, what do you mean by quiet? Imagine a thousand strings playing its own range of notes, none louder than the others. Each one builds harmony, a continuous thrum in the background of existence. I am now a lone string in search of familiar harmonies. I'll help you find them. Hmm. That's an interesting way to put it. He's just a lone, almost that instrument right there, but his, his analogy works a little bit better, a lone string. On his own, and we're gonna help him. We're gonna help him play his song. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I just heard something right there. Thankfully, we have this vehicle kind of protecting us right now, which is good. What is all this? Like, we're getting closer to that island, which is great. I don't think we ever got this deep, though, which is kind of cool to actually start exploring this area over here. Not have to worry about oxygen, not have to worry about creatures attacking us and whatnot, right? Even though we'll still get attacked by creatures, just need to watch out. Oh, wow, that gets really deep there. Oh, yeah, that goes down into, like, the... Lo well, no, no, not on this side, right? Oh, there's an oxygen plant right there, too. Okay, cool. I bet that's gotta be... That's gotta be where we gotta go. Oh, God! What in the world? Whoa, 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 why am I getting sideways? I must have crashed into the heck inside of a... Coral or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there's the Leviathan right there. Might wanna... I don't know. Keep, it, it, oh, oh, I can hear it. If I keep my light off, is it gonna is it gonna lose track of me? I don't know, but there's another one right there. Yep, I saw it right there. It's glowing tail there, bioluminescent tail. Might want to watch out for that. But let's go over here. We got the heck and Delta Station dock. That's kind of what this is for. Ooh, do not get it stuck. I remember I got the heck and sea moth stuck in the sea uh, in the Aurora. So I don't want to do that. I literally had to cheat and spawn in like three or four sea moths to try and like knock the sea moth off off the heck and Aurora. You guys remember that? <laughs> I didn't have any luck with that at all. 
But either way, uh, over here, I want to get some shrub nuts. Do we have any room? Uh, we can probably grab a... Well, we just need the shrub nut, like, seeds. If, if they even give us seeds. I don't know if they do. But just for curiosity's sake, just so I could plant them at the, at the, at the base. And use as, as, like, a... Oh, here we go. Use it as a potential food source. Somehow the heck, and peepers and whatever else over here is still... Still here. So here we go. Shrub nuts. Now... I don't know. It... Use that as a... Uh, no, I, I could straight up just eat it, but... I don't think this is going to give me any way of uh, planting this and getting any uh, anything out of it, so that sucks. Man, well, at least I can grab one one nut at a time, eat it, get my... Ox my oh, man, get my water, get my uh, food up, which is good. I'm not going to get my water up too much, but we have water bottles, right? Oh, I thought we did, but we don't. Because I drank them all earlier, huh? <laughs> but there we go. Man, I, I can keep one, I suppose got an inventory. I don't think I'm seeing seeds at the bottom or anything like that. There's probably a specific place where you could look to get the seeds for this, probably. I don't remember. But I do know that one tree back in regular Subnautica we got out of the water. I think all we had to do was just, like, hit it with our, our knife. Oh, wait! Just like that, and then it's just gone. Well, there's nothing down here for me to get. Uh, I'll grab that shrub nut, though, just because I don't... I don't know. Is that going to grow back? I don't know. <gasps> okay, I'm going to keep the shrub nut right here. We can use this to potentially start a shrub nut farm. I don't know if it's going to work, but I just kind of want to come over here and grab it just in case it actually does work, and then hopefully we'll get a bunch of food out of it and not have to really worry too much about uh, running out of food over over time and whatnot. And, you know, not have to go get a bunch of heckin' fish and cook them and all that kind of stuff. There's a the heckin' Leviathan again, the Cryptosuchus. Let's get the heck out of there and go back home. And then I guess we can end off the episode. I can hear the thing right behind us. Oh my god! Jesus, I knew it was right there. I turned around and then boom, how am I still surprised it's right there? Golly! I didn't think it was that close, to be quite honest. Like, I heard. Oh, oh, oh there's another one! Look at how fast the thing moves. Something that huge should not be moving that fast. Jeez. Oh, oh what's that? Oh, this is, I think it's just a part of the sea truck. Well, thankfully, we already have the full sea truck. We, we're literally in it right now. Yep, there's another one right there. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, there were different parts of the sea truck, though. So I, it, it might be worth it to at least check these. See if, uh, what does that say? Yeah, okay, sea truck fragment. But if I scan this, is it going to be like a part of a sea truck? Yeah, oh, I think I think if I think if it was a, like an extension of the sea truck, like something I could attach to the sea truck, I'd probably call it something more specific than just sea truck fragment now that I think about it. Yeah. I don't know what those are called, though, but I know one of them was like a one you could actually live inside of one, you know, where you'd have storage another one where you have an aquarium that like basically is like a heckin fish net where you crash into stuff just like that and it actually captures them and you could actually go back there and grab all the fish uh, another one was where you could actually craft stuff i think that might be the same one as the storage one not 100 percent sure but uh and then there were like either three or four attachments at the time whenever i made that whenever they first came out with the sea truck and i made that video about it on my second channel but either way we're back home which is great Nice, safe home over here, which is great. I do want to go over here and see if I can plant that shrub nut. And then, uh, I guess if we find out if we can or not, then whatever. We're going to end off the episode after this. So, let's go over here. I think it was this one, right? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Now, can I put shrub nuts over here? I can. Okay. So, boom. Just put the shrub nuts over here and then boom. Uh, hopefully, this one's just going to be our, our, our little Genesis seed. And then we're going to get one, or, you're, you know, you, you guys know how many shrub nuts we got out of one plant. Probably like a half dozen of them. We'll be able to continue planting them over here, and then we'll have a basically an unlimited amount of food, which is great. Only unfortunate thing is that it takes up like four different slots in your inventory, so we can only carry around like maybe a couple of shrub nuts at a time. So, you know, if we wanted to munch on some uh, shrub nuts, then it's not going to be very space efficient inside of our inventory. We're going to run, run out of space very quickly there. You know, but either way, I guess if we could end off the episode right here. Uh, I do need water. I might as well grab that bladder fish. There it is. I guess we could end off the episode right here. We got a lot of progress done. You know, a lot of reading. Got a little bit of adventuring done. And a little bit of myth busting done as well, which is awesome. And, of course, I, got, I took a lot of you guys' suggestions and actually, uh, in, uh like, like, myth busted them or, or whatever you want to call it right there. <laughs> so you seeing if they actually worked. And, of course, a lot of you guys uh, were, were very correct in terms of getting the crash fish or the, the crystallized sulfur. And, of course, like, testing whether or not we still get crystallized sulfur from the crash fish, like, little nest and a bunch of other stuff that we did. I, I can't really remember off the top of my head because I'm... In the background, I'm still looking for bladderfish and whatnot, so I'm kind of distracted. <laughs> but either way, for right now, I guess like, we, we can end off the episode right here. And the next episode... Oh, man, my inventory's full. Well, I could just straight up eat these uh, if I want to, you know? Uh, 
I, I don't have to uh, turn them into water bottles, but it's just a lot more efficient if I do. But, uh, it, you know, in an emergency situation, I just straight up just eat it, so it's not that big of a deal. But either way, oh yeah, and then of course we made the glass over here to make it a little, little, at least feel a little bit more open, which is cool. But for right now, I guess we can end off the episode right here. Like, I tried to say like four or five times right there. Welcome aboard, Captain. So thank you guys all very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, oh yeah, we have a uh, quartz now. We should be able to do this, right? <laughs> thank you guys all very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to let me know by leaving a like down below. And if you guys want more of these awesome videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, while you're down there, be sure to ring that bell. So YouTube sends you a notification as soon as next episode of Subnautica Below Zero comes out because you guys, now that we have the sea truck, now that we have the upgrades like the heck and rebreather, the uh, high capacity O2 tank, the fins, all that kind of stuff, kind of want to do more adventuring, especially now that we got all that reading out of the way as well. Got a little bit more context into the story and all the all the different creatures and, and con just context in general. <laughs> Got a lot more uh, information in general about the game, which is great. So we might as well do a little bit of adventuring next episode. So definitely look forward to that. And uh, we're probably going to end up going to that one old woman's last location that we uh, heard her from. Oh, wait, Titanium. Whoops. Didn't mean to put that in here. Probably going to go over there and see what she's up to. Just because uh, that, that was like one of the first second missions that we got. Was we got like spawned. Like that woman just came out of nowhere. Surprised us. Hey, it's me. Uh, you better stay off my island or whatever. You Are you with Altera? Uh. And I was, I was like, oh, no, I'm with, uh, I'm with, uh, Xenoworks. Yeah, that's who I'm with. <laughs> and then, uh, she just ran off for some reason. And now she's over there, pilot's last known location, like five episodes ago. Who knows if she's still there? She's got to be still there, right? And then, of course, we got to continue getting, uh, I might as well get rid of the alien distress beacon. Uh, where do I have that? Here it is right here. I'll just get rid of that. Uh, but, but, you know, pilot's last known location. We're going to go see what that's all about next episode. But until then... Thank you guys all very much for watching. I think I already did the full outro there, so I'll have to do it again. Thank you guys all very much for watching. And I'll see you guys here next time with some more Subnautica Below Zero. Oh, bye there.